Good morning, Lord. We thank you so much for being a friend that sticks closer than a brother. We thank you for your patience in dealing with us, especially when we want to test more than we trust. We ask you, God, rule over all that concerns us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. It's true that many things are not what they seem. Especially in this technology age, people present as one thing and turn out to be the complete opposite. We can't even trust our eyes because makeup, body enhancers, hairdos, lashes, bleached skin, and clothing can completely change one's appearance. And technology gives us living rooms with fireplaces and condos overlooking the ocean. So skepticism has become second nature. But we cannot carry this into our relationship with God. He requires full, complete trust, not test. Remember, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hebrews 11 verse 6. The story of Samson sometimes makes me sad. He was chosen before he was born. He was sanctified, set aside for God's purpose. Judges 13 verses 24 to 25 explain who he was. The woman gave birth to a boy and named him Samson. He grew and the Lord blessed him. And the spirit of the Lord began to stir him while he was in Mahanedan between Zorah and Eshtetal. So we know that Samson was not ordinary. He was selected and he was empowered by God. He had struggles like us all, but he was walking in power until he made a fatal mistake. He chose to persevere in testing God rather than in trusting. After the wife's saga that caused Samson to kill more than a thousand Philistines and to completely destroy their crop, we read of Samson getting involved with a woman in the valley of Zorek. Delilah. So let's give him credit for the fact that this time she was not a Philistine, but she lived in one of the five cities governed by the Philistine. So each day that he went there presented a risk, especially when you consider the mayhem that he had caused before. And Samson had three clear incidents that showed him that Delilah meant him no good. Yet, he told her what he thought was a secret to his strength. It was not the secret that he told that was a problem. It was the attitude of thinking he had this under control, of testing God. Read Judges 16 verse 20 with me. It says, Then she called, Samson, the Philistines are up on you. He awoke from his sleep and thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. He did not know that the Lord had departed from him. And the departure of the Lord meant his strength had left. The spirit did not leave because of a secret. Because there's nowhere in scripture that tells us that the Lord commanded him not to say anything about his hair. The spirit left because of a heart that persevered in test rather than in trust. The thought of the Holy Spirit leaving Jesus must have excited the enemy. That would be the strategic blow he was hoping for. If he could get Jesus to persevere in test, not in trust, then he would have a hold. I imagine that he tried to reason with Jesus. Look, this would be you standing on the words of your father. You'd be proving that God's words are rock solid. 
and we're doing this from the highest point of the temple. So it will be a grand show and everyone would know that your father's words are true. The enemy tried to force Jesus to put God on display. But Jesus knew the danger of testing God. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 9 reads, We should not test Christ, as some of them did and were killed by snakes. The place of refuge and safety was not in testing, it was in trusting. The same Psalm 91 from which the enemy quoted is not a psalm about the show of power, but of refuge and rescue from the attack of the enemy. To have this refuge, Jesus showed us that we need to dwell in the secret place of the Most High and abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And this place is only accessible to those who trust God, not test God. Psalm 91 verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. There are times when God may choose to send us signs as he sees fit. He knows when our faith is wobbly and he knows when we're tired. Our Father who loves on us will nurture us sometimes by ways of sign. But it can never be that we persevere in testing. We must instead persevere in faith. Each time I hear the phrase adrenaline junkies, I think about how this generation lived dangerously. Our nature is to be inquisitive and this leads us into dangerous waters at times. We dare to use God's mercies that was extended to us in the past to justify our reckless actions. Instead of trust, we thrive on test. But think about it. Do you test drive your car every day? No, right? Because you know by now that the car is fine and that it will drive. But when you were getting the car, you test drove it, didn't you? Why? Because you did not know it and you had no reason to be comfortable with it. So think about this. Why do you need to test God every time? Haven't you proven him by now? Don't you know by now that he has you covered and that he will take care of you? We only test things or people when we're not sure that they will or can live up to expectations. We test when we do not trust. So test is the opposite of trust. Since Jesus completely trusted his father, this temptation could not succeed with him. Well, because Samson decided to test God all the time, he ended up in problem. If you find yourself constantly testing God, it's time to be bold and to be confident in who he is and change that test mode into trust mode. Romans 10 verse 11 reminds us that anyone who believes in God will never be put to shame. Let us pray. O oh, righteous God, you who need no testing because you change not, we bless your name. Your words are infallible and unchangeable so we can trust you Teach us, Father God, to subdue our desires for test runs all the time and to choose instead to remember how you've led us in the past. Father God, we trust you with all our hearts. and We ask you, have your own way with us now, we pray. Amen and amen. <music>